I thought you were gonna have a stroke. So the work on the bottom of the boat is progressing pretty well. Uh, I'll hop under the cover in just a second to give you a look at. We haven't totally finished. We need to go up to here. Look at this, the color changes. So what the hell happened here? A big patch? Hopefully not. Right through to the metal it looks like. Rust. I wonder if they're gonna have some kind of a prescription that I should do. Rust, rust. There's just a little bit of play between the bearing and the inside here. So I'm gonna get them to add epoxy, which is what they're recommending to be done in here to build this area back up. And they haven't done this side of the starboard bow. And here, we're actually right down to the fiberglass. So here, I'm gonna get more gel coat added on top of the fiberglass. And, uh, this is my opportunity that I'm taking right now to try and get ahead on as many things as possible before that huge Pacific crossing. See that he's wet? See the water now? Oh. Wow. Uh, we have to fill to the fiber and then apply new, new, new gel, gel coat. coat. Uh -huh. So I'm here right now with the owner of the boat yard behind me and yeah. we're just talking about the bottom and the blistering and making sure that we do it right. It looks like it's going to cost me more money, um, but I'd rather do it right. Otherwise, why do it at all? Because we're going to get a consultant here who's an expert on this and hopefully they can recommend the exact course of action that we should follow. Yeah. Right. For fiber. Right, yeah. For erosion is for steel. Also, yes. Blister or osmosis is for, for, for fiber. Yeah. Should I do the three and two? Or should I do the three, or sorry, do the two, the one, and the two? Uh, it like, it would be close the same. Yeah, but the, the two, the one, and the two is a little better. If you do epoxy, it's easier to recount epoxy. Mm. Because maybe you don't find uh, rubber still mm. rubber still in, in, other, in other place. I see, I see. I asked Manzanillo to do three coats of primer. Okay. And they said, okay, sounds good. It doesn't cost very much more at all. Exactly. But then I was like, I'm not 100% sure if that primer okay. is, is an epoxy sealant. Is it epoxy? It is. I, I read you now that they ship. Okay. Assuming that the workers do everything right, which I know is not always the case. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were in my situation, both options are okay. Mm -hmm. Both options are used. Mm -hmm. If it's all the same, more or less close. Then, then I might just do the three coats of primer. Wow. Okay, so they've completely taken out the gel coat down to the fiberglass. And if you don't know boats, now you can maybe start to kind of visualize what's going on here. You have a big layer of fiberglass. That's where you get your strength. Then you have the outer shell, which is your gel coat. And then on top of that, you have to put barrier coat to prevent water working its way into the gel coat. So barrier coat is a primer. I'm gonna do three layers of that, different colors. So as you wear through it, you'll be able to see what layer you're on. And then finally, anti-foul on the bottom. So they've gone to all the different sections where there was osmosis and they've taken off the gel coat. That is scary. Okay. Quick little update here in the boatyard. Some recent developments. One thing is that I've realized that I haven't been working my crew enough. Kind of a me issue because I've been hoping that they'd be volunteering more to help out. And they do with day-to-day -day stuff like cooking and cleaning. Problem is actually I'm not comfortable completely asking them for help. Um, there's a dynamic between brothers, there's a dynamic between friends. Normally that dynamic is not one person ordering the other person around a whole bunch. That is a, a challenge for me and I've been kind of externalizing blame in that a little bit, but I've, I've finally realized that I do need to kind of really tackle that issue. So uh, I'm going to be having a meeting with the guys when Ricardo returns in a, a week or two. The other thing is that I've been getting kind of mentally geared up to start bringing crew on board the boat, but they also have to work on board to help the boat. They're not just passengers, they're not just kind of coming along for the ride. Everyone has to be put to work. And again, that kind of comes back to me in that I really have to kind of be the one stepping up and get comfortable with telling people what to do more. That has really been a shortcoming of mine as a captain so far, so I really need to work on that. But anyways, there's a website uh, that I was told about from uh, by James from Zingaro, Sailing Zingaro, workaway.com. Actually, workaway.info. I've just created a profile on Workaway. 
a surf instructor that we hired for surf lessons in Costeño. He was really interested in what, what I'm doing here. I said that he'd be interested in coming on board. His name's Lucas, seems like a really nice guy. So I think in the coming couple of weeks, he's gonna come down and um, say hi to me and, and Philip and Ricardo if Ricardo's here. Kind of get a sense of his personality and if we like him. I've already met um, this other person that Ricardo connected with. Her name's Celia. He seems very nice so far. We're actually already in a situation now where we don't have enough room or it's going to be a very, very tight fit to have those two additional crew members join. I finally ordered a generator for myself. Dollar generator. If I bought it here, it would be a thousand dollars. And I just couldn't stomach that. I just couldn't be okay with it. I ordered it online and I'm having it freight forwarded to Colombia. The generator is $450 US. The freight forwarding cost is $240 US. And that's still 300 US dollars cheaper than if I were to buy it here from a store. We have about um, a week and a half to two weeks of water with full occupancy on the boat. So needed that water situation to be dealt with. Went down in here and I checked this out and it's wet in here. Wet, wet, wet. And I'd been suspecting that there was a leak somewhere. Here it is. Right here on the hose barb where I placed it. It wasn't fun, but I got it off. And now we just have a straight connection from the cold water supply to the water maker intake here. Hopefully that's it for now. This washing machine has been Probably one of the biggest mistakes, probably that I've spent money on, but it might still become super useful in the future. I don't know. It's... And now we've got layer two of the epoxy barrier coat going on. Red. The dog has come to say hi. Hola, perro. Hola. Hello, 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 hello. It's been about nine or 10 months since I did the oil change and can't hurt to do more, more frequent oil changes. Here we have, this is the oil siphon hose and amazingly this engine comes with a pump. So you just pump this up and down and you can pump the oil out. You don't have to actually drain it from the bottom. And then once that is done, Here's the oil filter. I'm gonna remove that. Some extra oil will fall out and replace the filter. Why don't they build all engines? The pump built in, especially all marine engines. My last one did not have a pump. So that's the plan. This container underneath, catch the oil. That's it. Sailing gloves for the win. Barely did it and saved me from having to go and get my strap wrench. Just so we don't get a mix up. X means no bueno. Okay, so we've got Raul here. He's working hard. Say hi, Raul. Hi. <laughs> He's working hard on the engine instrument panel and it's going to be a thing of beauty. So he's just working away, getting everything working again because most of my gauges and instruments were not working, including my fuel gauges. So that's Raul's big project. He's doing a very good job. Now there's that scary moment where you turn on the engine. Am I forgetting something? Oil filled, oil was drained, oil was added, oil cap was put back on, there's nothing else to do. Okay, very interesting. The oil pressure was actually at zero for a few seconds when I started it up and that makes perfect sense because of the oil that needs to make its way through the filter and then hit the nozzles that's shooting it around inside the engine and then generate pressure. So that's very interesting. I never knew that happened, but it makes perfect sense. That's the oil change. I've been dreading doing it for so long and it's so easy. Reinstallation day. I've got my new pump here for the water maker shipped to me for free. It's very nice from Seawater Pro. 
the fact that I haven't um, actually ran the water maker means that the preservative that they put in the membranes that you have to flush out might still be in the membrane and in the water and may have prevented biological growth that would have caused the membrane to fail. So fingers crossed, you have to run the, uh, the water maker for about an hour and dispose of the first hour of water. Wow, that's stuck on pretty good. Oh, so cheap. And look, our uh, our PPMs have gone down to 320. So the higher pressure I go on here, the lower this number should go. I need we need to go up. I think we need to be under 100. Under 100. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. We just came back here to see what the actual running draw on the system is, and it's only pulling a thousand watts. It's only pulling 980 watts. That's amazing. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. TDS meter here is reading only 66 PS uh, PPM. Sorry, 66 parts per million. And I looked up online what other people are getting, and other people are getting like 100 to 250 even almost as high as 300. So that's wild. This water should be really, really, really good. Made huge progress on my list. This is week four here at the boatyard. Ricardo's been gone to Bogota and Medellin for a couple weeks now, which is good because it gives me more kind of freedom to move around the boat and, and, and work on things. I've been getting a ton of things done, which is really, really great. And the mechanics are coming back because they didn't finish their work on the engine and the electrician is supposed to get here today to install the new inverter so i don't know how he did it but he did it and this guy came and just stuck a screwdriver in the uh coolant port that i was trying to unblock for forever and he just got it unplugged so i'm gonna say it's a combination of mad skills on his part and uh, i got it started additional all this additional black water has come out of my engine from the lower drain port that was plugged up. Uh, right now I'm taking off all the covers for the couch cushions here and giving them a good wash. And there's my new Lee cloth or Lee line I guess you could call it. There's a screw on the other side here that just goes around the corner and it's looped on that screw. Okay so they were just explaining to me that the final coat is gonna go on today and then they're gonna lift the boat on the travel lift tomorrow and the reason they lift it on the travel lift, of course, is to get all the spots that are under the current stands that they can't get. So, job on these spots tomorrow. That means sanding down, primer, 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 anti-foul, anti-foul, and the boat will be ready to go in the water the day after tomorrow. Looks good, guys. Muy bien. There it is, layer one of epoxy. Layer two, layer three, layer four. So my freezer is frosting up. I'm gonna cut off the ice with this. That top coat epoxy is gonna dry over the next 12 hours. I don't think I did a really great job with it. You can see some blotchy spots where the pigment isn't mixed and where the primer is too thick, but uh, it dries so quickly I, I couldn't totally follow the instructions and put on two coats and put on the third coat before the second coat was completely dry. It dried right away. Okay, so dinghy patch project. Looks like it's complete for now. Patch, patch over top of a patch, patch over top of a patch. It's the nicest thing on my boat. Come on in. Um, you're here since long time in Cartagena. We've been in Cartagena for about a month now. Coming up on a month. Okay. Traveled since long time with Yoga. Been going for ten months. Are you uh, where are you from? So we're from uh, we're from. Well, I'm from Toronto. Yeah. Toronto, Canada, and Phil's from about an hour away in the town that we grew up in. Okay. A small town called Kitchener. Buddy Ricardo's not here right now, and he's also Canadian, but he's El Salvadorian. Mm -hmm. And we'll head out to the Rosario Island. Okay. South of here. Yeah. What we do is we'll check out here with our passports with the agent that checks the boat out okay and we'll sort of uh -huh. check out three four days in advance whatever is the maximum we can do and then we'll go to the rosario islands and then from there we'll continue on to panama um that'll be a nice good first sail 
for you. I feel like I forget how to sail mm. because we've been out of the water for like <laughs> almost four weeks. Seasick all over again. It's always, it's always a process of, it's like riding a bicycle, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Rosario Islands for a few days and then sailed to Panama. Yeah. Um, San Blas Islands. Mm -hmm. And then Colon, which is the city at the entrance of the north side of the Panama Canal. Okay, yeah. Ah, before the lake. Uh, yes, that's yeah. right. Okay. And there I'm going to get the life raft recertified, but um, when we get to Galapagos, they're not going to let us in if we have an expired. They're mm. very, very... Very strict. Very strict. Mm. Extremely strict for boats. Okay. They're also, the bottom has to be very, very clean, so it's good that I'm getting the bottom redone right now. Because do is you have to sail one whole day away from Galapagos and then get in the water in your boat. What do you yeah. mean? If of you want to get back in, you have to leave I... it because they don't want you to clean it. Where the <laughs> stuff that you clean off will fall into their space. Ah, yeah, okay. So you have to go. It's like a, it's like a forty miles. Marcus is okay. Yeah, in French Polynesia. Are you French, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm French. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can hear it. I, yeah. Well, your last name and the accent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I, but I was like, I don't think I've asked you yet. So that would be very helpful if you if you came all the way to French Polynesia. You yeah. know. If you, if you went that far. You we'll, speak Spanish also? I'm learning a little bit of Spanish okay. and we as Canadians know a very, very small amount of French, but yeah, there's a lot of, lot of change happening in the next few months. What do you think, Phil? What do you think about Lucas? First impressions are pretty good. Uh, he says he can cook French. All things that turn up pretty well. He knew about Cote de Rhone. <laughs> He's actually from that region. Yeah, yes. He's from that yeah. region. Our favorite wine from Saint, Mar Saint Martin, which is like five euro or four euro a bottle, Cote de Ron, and he's from that region. And he's like, oh, I know that wine. He's like, it's a strong wine. I'm like, yeah, that's a good wine. Well, we'll welcome him when he actually moves aboard, I guess. It sounds like we're a go. I mean, I'm a go on my end. I'm, I'm really happy with his attitude. He seems chill. He seems like the right kind of person. He'll probably be August, so that's good. That's it for this episode. I hope you'd enjoy seeing what a major boat maintenance is like. Stay tuned for the next episode where Stardate goes back in the water, we check out of Panama, and we head through the Panama Canal, getting our sights set on the world-famous Galapagos Islands, the birthplace of the theory of evolution. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification button, and we'll see you next time.